Hey, we're John and Kendra of Abbott Nature Photography, and we are about ready to go back into the forest and set up a camera trap using the Nikon SB28 flash. So, John, do you want to tell everyone why using that flash is beneficial in camera trap photography? Yeah, in the previous video, we showed you how to tear down an inexpensive Vivitar 2800 flash. And I'll put that card up here so that you can uh, see that video if you want to learn how to do that. They re that requires a little bit of electronic skills. Uh, this does not. Uh, these Nikon SB28 flashes are great. While they're not made anymore, they're readily available on eBay. And they have a standby mode that allows them to remain out with relatively limited battery life uh, for an extended period of time, which makes them fantastic for camera trap photography. Okay, let's do it. Another setup um, that we use for camera trap work, and this is going to be using a active, uh, active infrared sensor. Um, What's the difference between an active infrared sensor and a passive? A passive infrared trigger will send out a beam in a wide breadth area, and if that anything walks into that area, it is automatically triggered. That can be useful in, in some situations, but oftentimes you want an active infrared beam where you have a it's literally a beam a transmitter and a receiver and if that beam is broken so it's like a big old pencil line all the way across or something that's right so the, the reason that's advantageous so when that beam gets broken then your setup is triggered and the reason that can be advantageous is because you can have a specific focus point uh, with passive infrared there's a whole area that where animals could walk through that could trigger your setup and but it, they might be out of focus with active infrared you've got a specific beam uh, you can if your camera is basically perpendicular to that beam then you can be pre-focused on it and have a better chance of getting a sharp uh, focused sh uh, shot so here this is an, a kind of a, a seep coming out there's a lot of water it's an open area where animals come and visit uh, and this is well suited for an active uh, beam. There are certain animal trails we can see coming through here. And so if we put a beam over uh, an animal trail, an active infrared beam over an animal trail, or where uh, we see activity, like animals continually go to to drink or to eat, then that's where uh, that would be a good place to put uh, an active infrared beam. This is um, another uh, SLR setup. Another piece of uh, another DIY Tupperware container with a snoot to protect it. It is not um, weather sealed. In fact, you can see here it, this from rain is spattered up in here. There's, there's uh, a little bit of schmutz on the lens on the snoot. So that is one thing you have to deal with um, with these kinds of um, uh, setups that aren't sealed. <clears throat> Uh, I use a bogan clamp um, to support the heavier stuff like uh, like the camera uh, and I've just got a, mounted a ball head underneath here goes directly through the screw goes directly through and mounts to the bottom of the camera I'm usually using a vertical grip so that I have additional battery power for uh, for the camera and then a hole underneath where cords can come through for the trigger USB uh, flashes anything that I need um, I'll talk about um, this here in a minute it a good tip is um, to keep your camera low um, so that it's kind of kind of be more like eye level with the animals that you may be photographing uh, that just usually makes for a, a much more pleasing image than say if I mounted this uh, way up high and having flashes Detached from the camera uh, and in different uh, locations not only helps you with creating, get, you know, getting creative lighting, but also uh, um, avoiding a red eye from, from the animals. If you mounted a flash directly on your camera, just like with humans, you'll get uh, red eye that way. 
with this setup, I'm going to use these Nikon, Nikon SB28 flashes. Uh, and so I need some way to trigger them from the camera. And so the way that I do that is to use these uh, Yongnuo transmitter receivers. Uh, here's one right here. And so you have one that's on the camera that will be transmitting. And then you have them on the, each flash, which you can see right there, uh, which will be receiving. So I wanted to show you how you can use a Nikon SB28 Speedlight uh, for camera trap photography using a DSLR. Since this is a Nikon flash, can you use it with any kind of camera or do you have to use it with a Nikon body? Since this won't be directly connected to the camera, you can use it with any body that you want. Uh, although you do have to figure out a way to uh, connect to it and I'll talk about that here in a second. So, uh, so, I ha so with a flash like this, you can just expose it to the elements. Most people would not want to. So how do you, you know, package it up so that it can be watertight uh, and have long battery life and still uh, be utilized uh, in, outside in the elements? Well, uh, one of my handy dandy tricks for any of this kind of stuff are these um, Loctite uh, or Lock and Lock, a couple of different brands of Tupperwares that have a nice seal on them, they're clamps. You can kind of think of them as uh, super cheap Pelican cases in a way. Uh, and what I've done is uh, taken a flash and put it into um, one of these. I've attached the uh, a, a, a ball head plate uh, to the bottom so I can just clamp right onto the ball head. Uh, and then uh, this is a what, nice watertight uh, flash then for camera trap photography. So what's in here? So the basic breakdown, when you pull it out from inside, looks something like this. Uh, this is the flash. Uh, I've got a, it's being powered by, in this case, four C batteries. You can also use D batteries. And the way I'm dealing with that, just using SAE connectors to, to uh, connect the external battery pack. And I just made some AA dummy batteries uh, to enable to get the, the, uh, the power in there. Those are just wooden dowels. Actually, I'll take it out and show you. Just wooden dowels with screws on the end uh, so that um, you can get the, uh, the battery, the power of the batteries. Uh, the connection, to, you can make the connection. So that you can make the connection. It's a pretty tight fit, but there you go. And I just made a little hole in the uh, battery cover to, to allow the cord to come out. Then, in order to trigger the flash, I have, in the case it's not obvious, uh, I should say that using C's or D's, you can use double A's, of course, as the flash was intended, but using C's or D's will give you a longer life uh, for the, the flash, which is, of course, useful in camera trap photography. So that's the reason for using uh, uh, C's and D uh, batteries. Uh, <coughs> higher amperage. And then, the, on the bottom here is a Yongnuo, Yongnuo transmitter receiver. Let's see if I can get this off. Um, and I have, this can be still used with, uh, I think it's triple A's, but I have basically soldered a connection uh, so that I can, ex can connect external batteries to that as well. Uh, and so you can see here, if I get this back on, I just soldered the terminals, wires to the terminals. I can clip this back in there so that all stays good. And then I have four D cells. This thing, because this has got to be receiving, it's always got to be on. I have four D cells to make the battery life of this go much longer. And I'm just using uh, some uh, two D cell connectors with a nine volt adapter on top, connected together with a nine volt. And then I can just simply plug this in and you've got uh, a, a functioning uh, Yongnuo receiver that's got longer life. So, so how does this all fit in there? You just simply reconnect the Yongnuo. You connect the uh, batteries. You have your empty uh, case. The way I do it is I set it in there. Uh, 
flash goes in like this. It is a bit of a game of Tetris. It is a little bit of a Tetris. You do have to have good Tetris skills. So the flash goes in there like this. The batteries, to in this case the C's, is to power the flash, hold it in there left to right like that. And then I can stick the, the uh, D cells for the Yongnuo like that. I tend to always throw a um, little desiccant pack in there just to help with uh, any kind of moisture. And then just a couple of pieces of pick and, uh, pluck and pick, uh, what is it called? Foam? Pluck and pick uh, foam from um, pelican cases, pelican cases and, and such in there to help kind of hold everything in place. Uh, and then put it all together. And then with the clamp already uh, installed on the bottom, you've got a flash that you can then put on a ball head and aim uh, in different ways. So we'll show you uh, what this looks like uh, in the field. And maybe even a smidge of uh, diffusion going through that plastic. Yeah. One of the benefits of using them is that they go into a standby mode so that they um, go to sleep and they have to be woken up before they will fire the top off the capacitor. Well, um, one of the problems with this setup is how do you get, uh, basic, how do you wake up the flash um, and, and get your shot? Because if you just simply have the transmitter connected here, the receiver there, and you just push down the button, the very first time it pushes down, it's going to wake up the flashes, but it's not actually going to fire the flashes. So the way to get around that with this particular... And then you missed your shot. <laughs> and then you miss your shot, potentially, yeah. The way I get around that with this setup is that I have the trigger. I'm using a Trailmaster Active Infrared a trigger. I have it send a longer signal to the camera so that the camera, when it's asleep, it'll wake up. It'll send a signal to the flashes. It'll be long enough. It's like holding down the button uh, such that I'm taking uh, two to three shots um, in consecutive order. I have it on continuous fire in the camera. So basically the first signal wakes up the camera, fires off a shot, flashes are woken up, and then the second one that follows right afterwards will uh, fire the flashes. It's a kludgy way of doing it, but uh, and certainly the camera makes a sound before with that first exposure before the flashes are fired could potentially scare something but it's um, the only way to really deal with a situation like this where you've got to wake up uh, these, um, uh, these uh, transmitters. Uh, and a handy tool when you're dealing with this kind of stuff to check battery voltage or continuity between connections is just a portable little uh, multimeter. This is a small one I've had for years from Radio Shack. That in itself tells you that you can't get it anymore. Uh, but there, I'm sure there are lots of little portable uh, multimeters out there. I always stick this in, in the bag because this is really handy, again, for checking voltage, continuity on connections if something gets uh, broken apart or whatever. So uh, a good tool for DIY camera trap uh, work like it. Um, so let's set up the flashes. So the flashes, again, are anchored... Uh, onto a bogan clamp um, with a ball head. Uh, I've mounted the uh, little clip uh, for the ball head so that these things can just pop right in there. Um, and then I can maneuver it around as need be on the, uh, on the ball head. So I'm gonna get the power going on this. Okay, flash number one. Clips right into place. Okay. active infrared which means that I've got a signal being transmitted from this unit received by that unit over there and then that unit is connected to uh, the camera and if this beam is broken that's where uh, it will trigger it so this is being just mounted by a bogan clamp and a ball head Okay, there's 
there's a switch on the bottom to turn it on. I can read this see on. Kind of roughly aim it where I want the beam to be. It needs to go this way. Think more. There, there, down a little maybe. There you go. Vegetation may be blocking the the camera or the trigger, and so you may need to do a little bit of trimming there. Trail masters are. Pretty rock solid. Um, the Cognosis Scout System, which we'll show uh, later on, with a little bar glass moving around on top of this uh, uh, transmitter, is a really a nice, uh, better system for sure. Um, we're just trying to show in our in these series of videos kind of different ways of doing this scaling up um, from the cognizance one is just more user-friendly it's more turnkey um, it's uh, a lot of advantages that's but, right but these work just fine too these are these are these are good as well just not as user-friendly so um, we get out of setup mode so this is wired directly to the trigger so, so this is yeah the wired directly to the trigger just with a long cable um, so trigger over there uh, this is just the cannon remote comes up through a little hole here that I've made in the bottom and then just plugs in all right and then um, we want to Kind of focus on our specific spot right here. You might want to come in and drink. This is the advantage again of an active infrared trigger is you can focus on a very specific spot. I painted this plastic uh, container for the camera but I made a little window so I could see the settings uh, from the top uh, now in order to control those Nikon flashes again I have uh, a transmitter receiver that's just in transmitter mode uh, the others always have to stay on they consume more power that's why I have four D cells with those because those are in receiving mode because this is in transmitting mode it doesn't require as much power so I've just got two D batteries connected to, to this to extend its life um, and so, uh, one thing we can do is just test. You say those, the flash is just fired by me doing a test button there. Better. Sits in there right like that. I just move the cording back a little bit. Everything's plugged in nice and tight in there. Recheck so I can just do a, a test fire. Flashes fire, check my uh, my scene, my exposure. This is during the day. Most of these shots will be at night. Uh, so um, next thing to do is put the sun shield on it, trigger it, test trigger it, make sure it works, and then walk away. And uh, the fun is coming back and seeing what, uh, what neat critters uh, have come through here. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions or comments about what we did just stick them in the comment section below and we will get back to you um, and we are going to show you how we set up our Cognosys camera trap setup um, it's definitely the most user-friendly setup that we have and also our insect trap camera so much smaller subjects uh, we'll be doing that soon as well so if you're interested in that you can like and subscribe that would be wonderful thanks bye